General, I hope you have a good explanation for what just happened. General Stone stood in the control room. The person before her on the video screen was one of the many officials of GUN. What his name was, she didn't know. No one knew who the leaders were, for plausible deniability. It has been hours since she launched the F-16 Bigfoot to New York, and not only did it end with a failure, it also seemed to be ending with more unexpected results. I felt the secrecy of the creatures was no longer a factor and initiated the Gold Ring Initiative, which allows me to deploy our advanced gear anywhere, including U.S. soil. In a time of extreme crisis, in war, not for one skirmish. There were cameras that caught a glimpse of the F-60 Bigfoot and people who have heard explosions and fighting. People are getting anxious, General, and you are responsible. May I remind you, sir, that these creatures are suspected of hijacking one of the emeralds out of our grasp. Action needed to be taken. <sighs> this is why I can't stand military brats. All action and no discretion. I had hoped your punishment with this relocation would have softened your hot-headed nature, but it appears I was wrong. Uh, hold on a moment, if you please. General Stone recognized the voice and spun around. The agent she spoke to on the phone strode in. His soft, grandfatherly voice was suddenly hardened by a snake-like smirk. How did- I was stopping by to see how things were doing and let myself in. Sir, if you can hear me out. General Stone did what she believed was best for the people. It may not have been the best approach, and I cannot fathom why she did it. But once I figured out her plan, I quickly gathered my men to secure the area. Ah, uh, so it was you who cleared the area so quickly. Commendable. At least one of you was acting clearly. General Stone was fuming. She couldn't even regain her composure as this man smirked beside her. He played her from the very beginning. He used her, and she hated being used. Very well. There will be consequences, General Stone. Do not mistake this. But it's not like we can't spin the situation in our favor. I will contact you, David, once I need you. I look forward to it. I told you, I have been playing this game longer than you have. Had you succeeded, your reprimanding wouldn't have been so severe. Ah, well. Live and learn, I suppose. Right? Y you I don't know who the hell you think you are, but- Ah, uh -uh. Temper General. That's what got you in trouble before. And I hate to see it happen again. I'll see you soon. He walked out with the same confidence he had when he walked in, and General Stone suddenly felt like the walls around her were closing in. She had always been on top of the situation, as her father had guided her. But all the training in the world couldn't prepare her for this. First the humiliation of being moved out here. Now this? How would she ever regain her status with this? You know why it failed, right? General Stone gave a jump as Albert Robotnik stepped from the doorway. The F-60 Bigfoot, you know why it failed, right? Doctor, I am not in the mood for- You tried to take my uncle's devices made for utilities and turn them into a war machine. It's actually sad. You can slap some machine guns on a washing machine, General. But in the end, all you have is a machine that can clean the blood off the victim's clothes. Doctor, I want you to realize how easy it is to make someone like you disappear. Should I tell Esther how? You won't do it. You need me. Need you for what? War machines. General, real war machines. No need to take my uncle's little knickknacks and slap some war paint on them. I'll make you real weapons worthy of your time. You're the pathetic one, Doctor. You told me straight out that you have no experience in creating weapons. So again I ask, what can you offer me? Ah, a little test, General. I see you know more than you let on. You mean the various plans for combat weapons that you developed? The ones your uncle rejected? Storing your laptop in your apartment labeled furry porn? Huh, kudos to whoever was brave enough to open that, by the way. Regardless, I made those plans to supply our country's police. Arm them with better weapons and armor, keep them alive for their families. 
But my uncle had a very strict no warmonger policy. Was so paranoid of those ideas, leaving police hands and being sold to the highest bidding warlord. Say I was interested in letting you stay on board. What do you want in return? What I want? I want in. In this organization and the plans. And most importantly, I want to see my work used in the field. If I didn't know any better, Doctor, I'd say you were trying to break out of your uncle's shadow. No, General. I'm trying to get away from his noose. The noose of his legacy that's tightening around my throat and strangling me until I have nothing left. I want to be the number one on everyone's list of leading great minds. It will be me they actively seek as their first choice, and not because my uncle was unavailable. Let me make war machines for you, General. Together, we can carve out our own legacy. General Stone stared at him for a moment before she walked over to one of the doors and began typing in her keycard. I will repeat what I said before. The door opened to show an advanced robotics lab before them. You have a lot of work to do, Doctor. It's time for you to get started. I don't think I need to explain the awkwardness of the four of them sitting in Miles' garage. Sam and Dart were finally back to human, and Tikal was finally visible, as she was holding one of the emeralds they had. Miles was staring at her with wonder and intrigue, and Dart and Sam were busy giving steely looks to each other. So this garage is cozy? That's because it's a lab, not a garage. But I'm glad you like it. Totally tricked this place out with the best equipment I could pirate. The best you could what? Focus. You promised me answers. Sam walked over to one of the emeralds, wrapping it in a towel and holding it up. I already know what those are. Chaos emeralds. So that's one question answered. I have a lot more. So why are you so hesitant? I guess I'm really dreading to have the answer to the question I really want to ask. And it's not why me or who are you. <sighs> Where is my brother? You said his name, you know him. Do you know where he is? Is he okay? Sam, I don't know your brother. <laughs> no, 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 don't play dumb with me. You said his name. You knew his name! And don't you dare say you pulled it off my Facebook or something! Sam, I know your brother by name. That's all. I never actually met him. Don't lie to me! You have to know! Sam? TEN YEARS! He's been gone for ten years. He was supposed to come home from school and he didn't show up. He said he was taken off the street and... No one even saw it happen. No one. They searched for months and months until years rolled by and... We were told to do what we need for closure. They wanted us to give up. But what if I didn't want to give up? What if I wanted my brother back? What was I supposed to do? Who would, who would I ask to even help when everyone turned their back on me? On him? And then you came along and I, I thought, I hoped he was supposed to come back home. We were going to watch a, a movie together. We. Sam broke off and turned his back to them. Takal looked down at the floor in shame while Dark kept his face impassive. Sam. No, don't. I. I need a minute. A somber air fell upon them as they saw Sam's hopes dashed away. Takal could feel her guilt eating at her. She should have said something when she gave him the emerald. She didn't realize how much hope she gave him. We may not know where he is, but he left you a gift. Sam stopped and turned around. Dart gestured to the emerald he had wrapped in the towel. Sam, the reason Takal knew his name is because the Chaos Emerald was meant for him. The Guardians, the ones whom we answer to, wanted a boy named in the Suai family to inherit the emerald when he was old enough. And he vanished. Not even the Guardians could sense his presence. But the order didn't change. They wanted a Suai, so... The Emerald moved down the list, except that you. You're one of us now, the Guardian. A lot of things will be expected of you. Can't make you promises, but you have something you didn't have ten years ago. 
power. Power you could use to find out what really happened to him. As well as make sure something like that doesn't happen to other families. You have a chance here, Sam. You may not have been the intended holder of the Emerald. You have it. What will you do with it? <laughs> you make it sound like I have a choice. You do have a choice. So if I can guess, someone like you, I know what your answer is. Alright. I want to know. Who are the Guardians? And what is it I have to do? We'll have plenty of time to answer those questions. We just need to lie low for a while. And... Uh, I hate to interrupt, but uh, that may not be possible. The three of them turned to Miles as he was pulling up images on his Google search. Various high-profile news sites with similar headlines. And a picture of Sam and his hedgehog form in front of the courthouse. Various headlines ranging from big blue animal in front of courthouse to giant blue creature attacks. It wasn't until Miles started showing forum posts when Sam began to pale. It started with one person commenting on his resemblance to a certain character. Then more joined in, and more, and more. Soon there were threads with that name in bold font, and like every big movement, it began to spread. Oh no... Hello? Sam! Are you seeing what's on the news right now? Yeah, yeah I am. Isn't that so cool? Oh man, everyone here is going crazy about it! You should totally hear it all! Sounds fantastic. Oh, Sam, do you have any free time? I have like a thousand things to tell you about. I could be at your house in half an hour. Uh, sorry, Maria, I can't right now. I'm about to slip into a coma. Call you later! Uh, okay, I... Wait, what? Sorry, Sam, I know you don't like it at all. But it seems like New York now knows he has... Please don't say it. Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, come on! Hello? Dr. Albert Robotnik? Yes, who's this? Having any luck tracking a pesky blue rodent? I don't know what you're talking about. Unless you're crank calling, and in that case, I say fuck. General Stone can be high maintenance, can't she? She sets you to work for two weeks and already wants results. Doesn't she know advanced war machines take time to build? She's not an easy woman to impress, right? You're with that David fellow, aren't you? The fellow G U N. I won't fall for your trickery. I doubt it. You just revealed to me you're now a part of G U N. You spill things when you get flustered, don't you? Look, I'll get right to the point. You want to get in good with your new friends? I can help you with that. How? I can find you Sonic the Hedgehog. You know where he is. I will. And when I do, I can tell you. When you do something for me, of course. What could you possibly want from me? Uh-uh. Patience, Doctor. No need to be so hasty. All good things happen in time. I will contact you when I am in New York, and we can go over the little details over the phone. Sound good? No, not good. I will not work with someone whose name I don't know. Oh. So you're considering it? Maybe. I need a name first. Who are you? The girl in question, in her late teens, stood facing her wall in her crappy apartment room. A whole list of Sonic's appearances in the past two weeks. Plus common places he's been seen, eyewitnesses' reports, and notes on his behavior. Her light clothes compensated for the heavy heat in the room. Her short brown hair was neatly brushed off her face as she smirked. We'll be in touch, Doctor. As for a name, you can call me Rouge. <laughs>